I was just thinking that walking a Camino, you know, it's absolutely not a race. There's no rush to get anywhere. But you sort of constantly rethinking your options in the back of your mind. You know, like uh, there was a village a little way back there, but it was 600 k's off the Camino. And, oh, that's, a, that's an extra k just to go in and have an orange juice and back out again. And it's getting hot. You know, all of that's going to probably add 40 minutes to the journey. So I thought, what the heck, I've, I've got just over a litre of water to go 11 k's. That should be sufficient. Let's crack on. And then soon after that, I saw a petrol station about 200 metres off the Camino. Did I say the village was 600 k's? 600 metres. So the petrol station, 200 metres off. I thought, oh, that's, I'm willing to trade off that distance to go and get an extra drink. If I hadn't seen the petrol station, I probably would have just cracked on and not had the rest to put my feet up and change my socks. Reason being, uh, <coughs> I probably had sufficient water but not really much extra. And so I probably would have felt the urge to keep going and get there sooner. Um, but given that I was able to have a drink at the service station and pick up another 500 ml of water, I've got loads of water now. So I thought I'd give my feet a treat. It's always little trade-offs as you're walking. That's one of the things I'm finding about walking the Via de la Plata. <coughs> I was talking about this last night. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let's try and get to a pharmacy for this. Um, the whole logistics of the VDLP is a little bit different. So, you know, whereas on the Francis, for example, you just sit out in the morning and let's see how far we go, and you might pass through three or four villages. Very often on the VDLP, there are no intermediate villages, and you're thinking about where, where will I walk to today? So it might be, you know, I have an option to walk 20 k's, but that leaves me a 10 k tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do such a short day. Can I manage a 30? You know, so I notice people sort of, or maybe it's just the people I'm associated with, sort of looking at maps in the evening, think, oh, if we do a 25 tomorrow, that'll give us a 20 the next day. So because the there aren't these intermediate villages, you, there's a bit more planning sort of in your, your daily distances. So for example, today, going to Val de Salor. Originally, after that, I was going to have a short day into Catharis, 10, 10 k's. Um, but I'm actually holding up okay. I was going to do two very short days, a 10 and a 12, to kind of give myself a break. But because I'm holding up pretty well, I'm not having any major foot problems. <coughs> and in talking with people over the last couple of days, I'm actually going to push through from Val de Salor through Catharis to, oh, what's it called? Casa, or Casa de Catharis, which will give me a 22k day tomorrow, which is a comfortable distance for me now. Uh, so, you know, it's constantly changing. You have your loose plan in the back of your mind, but depending on how you're coping, and, you know, you're going to feel different from day to day. Do I feel like I can do 30 tomorrow or 20 or 15? What's the weather going to be like? So, for example, tomorrow's Sunday. <coughs> and I'll do uh, Val de Salor to Casa de Catharist, 22 k's. The day after that is a real challenging one. And I've talk, been talking to other programs about it because from Casa de Catharist to Canya about Kenya Varel, I think it's called. It was about 33 k's. Um, nothing in between. You know, it's hot weather. I don't really want to stretch that far. Um, unfortunately, the, there was an inter intermediate albergue that's been closed for a couple of years. So we were bouncing around ideas. and you know, Should we maybe pull some of our gear out and send it forward so we're walking with a very light pack uh, do we other people have an option where they 
walk as far as the Umbalze and the reservoir and get the taxi back from there and then shuttle back the next day. So lots of options to do that section. I haven't decided yet. I'll see how I feel at the end of tomorrow. A little bit hesitant about trying a 33 in this fairly hot weather. I just don't want that to be the straw that breaks the camel's back and screws up my feet. But who knows, I'll study the route a bit. That's another important factor. Will it be on nice trails like this or is some of it on the road? But there's always options. So I guess that was the point of this waffle. That you know you, you kind of take each day as it comes and how do you feel? What are the options? And be sensible, you know, don't push yourself. You don't want to be out here in this weather. I think it's about 28 now, with 10 k to go and running out of water. <laughs> it gets pretty bloody uncomfortable. So carefully plan your days. Oh, time to get some k's behind me, I think. Stop waffling, Rob. See you soon, folks. Thank you.